Yo, what's going on guys? It's Dylan, and I'm back again with my weekly comic pickups review. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is basically where I just talk about what I picked up this week at my local comic book shop, and I give you, you know, my slight details on it, or what happened in it. Never give, try my best always not to give no spoilers away. But, uh, it's actually kind of a small week, you know, I probably got, I got a decent amount of true believers, but, uh, it was honestly a really, real small week. Uh, it looks like, though, next week and the week after, though, are going to be big weeks, though. So, I can't wait for that, though. But, uh, you know, I usually like to start with my pick of the week. And I almost just forgot one. I almost just forgot one. And it, uh, it's actually a tie. It would probably been, it might have been a tie for my pick of the week. Um, but my pick of the week is Power Rangers, uh, what, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, TMNT mashups coming straight out of Boom Studios and IDW. Oh my God, this these two things were my absolute favorite thing as a child. And the artwork in this is just perfect. I've been reading the TMNT on IDW, but I haven't been reading the Power Rangers on Boom, but I have been hearing amazing things. I really wanna pick up some of the trades. And after seeing this art and everything, oh my god, I, just, I gotta get on it because this was just so much fun. You know, to me, it, it completely lived up to the expectations that I had for it. It was just so fun, and I really cannot wait. It sucks. It's only five issues. I wish this was 12 issues, man. This, this is just gonna be so much fun. And, uh, man, I, yeah, it, I highly recommend it. Um... Especially if, if these were any, if this is what you liked, if you're a 90s kid like me or you grew up watching these two, this is for you. This is straight up for you. But next, another close, this one was really close. I almost forgot about it. So I was going to say this is my pick of the week. And I put this one to the side because I read this one first. But uh, Marauders, issue three. Oh my, oh, almost Issue three. This was a great issue. It, it was a uh, kind of really just between the Black King Sebastian Shaw uh, having a conversation with someone, and I, it was really good. Like Jerry Duggan's just been killing it. This is definitely by far the best X Men title, and uh, I believe you know it says the order to read them in is X Men issue three first because we got three titles again this week. X Men issue three first, Marauders. Um, and then, what was the last one? Excalibur. All of them issue threes. But, yeah. Oh my god, that was just the best. Both of them. Both of those issues were just so great. Um, X-Men, issue three. Artwork, I'm not really feeling as much on, uh, on this book at all. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool. So a lot of stuff takes place in the Savage Land. Like, the, uh, you know, the mutants are having a problem where they can't really, uh, access the savage land like that's the only uh gate they're not able to access and uh some really weird stuff kind of happens in it uh cyclops is a straight badass in it but they uh you know look out for my spoiler review on this because this one was kind of weird i don't really understand I, I really don't think uh what happened would ha go down i mean i don't know it, it was kind of weird but it, it was still decent but Excalibur issue three, uh, this was this was pretty fun. Uh, we uh, we get you know we kind of figure out what's going on with Apocalypse a little bit, and then we get this new I don't know if he's a new mutant, but we get this guy named Richter. So uh, he he might be new, I don't know. But uh, there was an interesting dialogue between uh, apocalypse and him which was uh because he was actually a mutant real scared and he was trying to figure out if he could go to Krakoa or not but this was uh this was pretty cool I I think I definitely enjoyed this more than the x-men issue but uh yeah that, that x-men issue it has a couple good uh parts in it but not as good I'd say uh, Marauders first Excalibur and then x-men that would probably be my ranking for those issues I mean, artwork was fantastic in Excalibur, though. Artwork was really great. And we get a little bit more uh, info on what's going on with, uh, you know, the new Captain Britain, which is uh, Betsy Braddock, and some stuff going on with her brother, 
uh, because it was, you know, passed from uh, him to her. So, you know, that was pretty interesting. But we get one of these uh, amazing Spider-Man. Uh, 2099 is in trouble. Uh, I don't know if it's a tie-in, but technically I think it is written by Nick Spencer. Art was pretty good in this. Uh, I think it's a different artist than usual. Yeah, it is definitely Oscar Basil Dua. But... Uh, this issue was pretty cool. It had some cool stuff going on with Dooms. I think Doom, I might pick up that 2099 uh, one-shot next week. But I really wasn't feeling the Venom and Ghost Rider one. I, I ended up passing on those. I, I, you know, I kind of wish I would have picked up the Venom one. But five bucks for those? I mean, I enjoyed this, the Conan 2099, but... I was trying to keep it a, a, a small, a smaller week and pass up on those two, especially because next week and the week after are going to be huge. So this was a good issue. It uh, had some cool stuff with Doctor Doom, most definitely, and uh, the way it ended was pretty, pretty cool. And a big cliff cliffhanger ending. Uh, a lot of cool artwork, and there was actually a scene where uh, maybe you know Spider-Man's uh, where they actually kind of do a little nod to uh the Rasputin and that uh Red Knight crawler looking dude from uh House of X or yeah no Powers of X that one was but yeah it was pretty cool I had fun with it um Daredevil issue 14 can't say much about this because I haven't been reading it uh, I've been picking up all the issues I just gotta catch up on them I only read like issue four and I fell off because it was kind of slow for me but I've been hearing so many great things and the artwork is really fantastic by Marco Cacetto, but I just gotta make the time to read it, because this one seems like a kind of slow burn, like, almost like the, you know, I don't know, a lot of sit down, and a lot of just back and forth talking, it seems like, in that one, so, I hear so much rave, but then I've heard from a few people that they think the same, that it was kind of boring, you know, but, uh, on the image, Spawn, issue 303, Hell Hunt, part 2, uh, I actually wanted to I gotta get that medieval cover A. I uh, thought that that one was actually gonna be the cover A, but it turned out it was cover B, so I had my shop order that. But this issue, it continues where we left off. We don't even get any, we get, we get literally like a page of medieval spawn, and I don't really know what's going on with that, but it was a pretty cool issue. There's like three stories in it almost. And one of the stories in the back was the same story, I believe, from last issue. I gotta double check, but I think they add I think he added one page. The but uh yeah, one, two, three, four. There are four of them were the same, and I'm pretty sure he added one extra page to this issue. So that was kinda weird. But it was a decent like the first story was the best, I think. Let me see. Yeah, the first story was yeah the first story was the best, but the other two were okay. Uh, I'm interested to see where the next issue goes though, and find find more about Medieval Spawn. Um, next from Image we got Dead Eyes issue three. I think this has just been this they've been dropping some cool covers for this. Uh, this series has been so much fun. I'm just a huge mobster type movie fan. I love all those movies, and that's just, if this feels like it could definitely be one of those movies, Dead Eyes is just pretty damn cool, and he's, he's a straight up badass, the artwork works perfect for this, and we got Jerry Duggan just slaying it, like he's doing on Marauders, like, dude, the man can do no wrong, he killed it on Conan 2099, gave the dude a lightsaber, and still found a way to make it badass, like, come on, man, the dude's killing it, but... I just really had fun with this. Uh, man, there's just some crazy parts in this, man. I highly recommend it. If you are into any type of those mobster movies, give this a shot because it's just been so much fun. Uh, next, next, I got, like I said, I passed up on the Dollar Comics Birds of Prey DC one, but uh, Marvel had like five um, Star Wars True Believers come out. And I snagged all of them. I was going to pass on maybe one of them, but I just decided to go with it. And this was the one I was going to pass on, The Hunter. I haven't read these, but I'll, I check these out when I'm bored or something, you know, on the weekend. But these are always, you know, just fun to have or just to have a read if you want the classics. 
But uh, well, this one, the one I'm, I thought this one was real cool, Vader versus Leia. Uh, I think this one with the Death Probe and Luke Skywalker, that one's pretty cool. And uh, this was the one I was most excited for was this uh, hut run. And I actually looked and Jason Aaron wrote, wrote this and the artwork is just fantastic. Look at that artwork. It looked like, dude, it's like a painting. And uh, this one, Star Wars, according to the droids. I, psh, dude, who doesn't love the Star Wars droids? So, if the, yeah, th this one is like an older story, but it looks like it's straight from C-3PO and R2-D2's point of view. So, come on now, if you're a Star Wars fan, that's a must-have. For a buck, too, uh, on to DC, maybe the best issue in the last ten issues or so, but Bat City of Bane, Batman, issue four, we only got one more. It was a little confu- it was honestly kind of confusing throughout the whole thing. I think I got it towards the end. I think I got it. If I read it maybe one more time, I'll get it completely, but- it was definitely a, a lot better of an issue than any of the other past, like, five issues, at least. At least. But I thought it was a pretty good issue, honestly. I, 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 uh, I thought it was a pretty cool new take, and I think some people that read it, they might be surprised by it. And uh, it's an interesting thing, I, I, interesting story. And I'm interested to see where he, he takes it in the last one. Especially because we know Tom King is going to continue with a Batman and Catwoman series. And uh, what, you know, what Thomas Wayne wants for his son in this issue is pretty interesting. And I, I'm i sure it will go into that series. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to give that a shot because I know Clay Mann's going to be on that. But I think I, I think I will at least give that that at least the first issue was shot, and I, I just, I don't know if I want to get back into another Tom King story, just because that one was dragging so much at times, but, you know, if it wraps up quite, quite nicely, I mean, I don't know, uh, next we got Young Justice, issue 11, coming out of Wonder Comics, this was actually a pretty fun issue, we got Naomi linking up with Young Justice, and we, uh, finally get Young Justice, back to the regular to their earth i believe so i think they did yeah because they're at times they're not even sure they're like for a time they're like okay we finally made it back and a few hours later they're like well, i don't know did we actually make it back but i think they did finally make it back to the right multiverse but some crazy stuff goes down with superboy in this and we finally get a meet up between naomi and young justice so yeah i know a lot of people it seems like have been hating on this I have been not really enjoying any Bendis' work lately. I think he killed it with Naomi. And he's been doing a pretty decent job with this. But a lot of the other stuff he's been doing is wearing so thin on me. But yeah, I had fun with this issue. Last but definitely not least, Justice League issue 37. Now one thing I noticed about this is it had a whole hell of a lot of uh, ads it seemed like. There was like two pages two big page spreads that are pretty cool though and it, it's like a straight up like oh man it's just a huge spread two like two in a row two pages that are huge spread two page spreads and uh those were pretty cool but yeah man i was just noticing i was like man there's like tw literally I'd, I'd have to count there was 12 ads though hey let's see i i mean i think there's 24 to 26 pages usually in a Book maybe it's 32. I don't know, but 12 at 12 pages of ads. That's a lot. But this uh, this has been like the big cosmic freaking war, or what is it, the uh, Doom War? This has just been so crazy. And next issue, it, we're saying we're it, it's saying we're getting the big showdown. So man, uh, the Justice slash Doom War Part Eight. Scott Snyder, Jorge Jimenez. Man, they, they really did it. Or Jorge Jimenez did some big ass panels in this and just some full spreads. So that was really cool. Uh, yeah, man, I, I'm interested big time to see how Scott Snyder wraps this up. This is, I, I never got to check out those Dark Knights medals and stuff. So this is really like my intro. Besides, I read like one of his volumes of uh, his Batman run, like the. Uh, the death in all the families or something but this has been pretty cool it's been a little confusing at times and a little wordy 
but I think him having Tenny in come in has really helped him, you know, clean some stuff up, and it's just been a, it, you know, it's, it's, it's like Endgame, you know, but the Justice League, in my opinion, and it's been really fun, and I am really excited to see Scott Snyder wrap it up, and, you know, it'll be sad to see, to see him go, but it looks like they got, uh, Robert Vendetti jumping on, and, dude, He's a pretty damn good writer, too, so I'm interested to see what he does, too. But hey, guys, that's what I picked up this week for uh, New Comic Book Day. Let me know what you guys picked up in the comments down below if there was anything I missed. You know, like I said, it was a little bit smaller week. I know I passed on those $20.99 and that, uh, those $20.99 one-shots, and I passed on that Sir Conan Serpent War, but I'm reading the co plenty of Conan books, and that one just, that's like in that Marvel Universe, and I'm... That's not the Conan I really, I dig, man. I, I like the the Savage Lands Conan. But, yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you guys could hit that like button on your way out, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, bell notification so you get all updates on all my videos, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys.